Okay, Foundation's Progress, Part 3, the story of Viking Isaac Asimov's writing of the Foundation series. We continue, Part 3, where we left off. The account, as given here, is stitched together from several separate accounts of the same day, as contained in the early Asimov, pages 384 to 386, in Memory at Green, pages 311 to 319, I. Asimov, pages 116 and 117, and the story behind the Foundation, an essay they would put in some of the more recent printings of the Foundation installments. Picking up from what had been already said, quoted above, about this desire to write a future historical, it says, quote, I tried to do this as early as 1939 when I wrote a story called Pilgrimage. It was terrible, and Campbell would have nothing to do with it. I finally sold it to Planet Stories under the title, Editor's Choice, Not Mine, of Black Friar of the Flame, and it appeared in the spring 1942 issue of that magazine. It is very likely the worst story I have had published, and the one with the worst title. It was revised second times before I sold it, each revision making it worse. Since then, I do not revise substantially except under very extraordinary circumstances. That rather daunted me. But the urge to write a historical novel of the future still had me by the throat. I had just finished reading Edward Gibbon's History of the Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire for the second time, and it occurred to me that I could write a story about the decline and fall of the Galactic Empire. On August 1, 1941, when I was a lad of 21, I was a graduate student in chemistry at Columbia University and had been writing science fiction professionally for three years. In that time, I had sold five stories to John Campbell, and the fifth story, Nightfall, was about to appear in the September 1941 issue of Astounding. I had an appointment to see Mr. Campbell to tell him the plot of a new story I was planning to write, and the catch was that I had no plot in mind, not the trace of one. I hastened after class to see him. Robot AL-76 Goes Astray, astray was still then working its slow way through the typewriter, because the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union distracted me. It was an important day in my writing career. Not liking to come to him without an idea, I racked my brain for a story idea on the subway ride there. Failing, I tried a device I sometimes used. I opened a book at random and then tried free association, beginning with whatever I first saw. The book I had with me was a collection of the Gilbert and Sullivan plays. I happened to open it to a picture of the fairy queen of Iolanthe throwing herself at the feet of Private Willis, the sentry. Thinking of sentries, I thought of soldiers, of military empires, of the Roman Empire, of the Galactic Empire. Aha! The fate of pilgrimage was rankling me. Not only had Campbell rejected it four times, but also Pole had rejected it twice, an amazing once, seven rejections in all. It was a future historical, and I still wanted to write a future historical. I therefore suggested to him that I do a short story against the background of the slow fall of the Galactic Empire, something I intended to model quite frankly on the fall of the Roman Empire. Why shouldn't I write the fall of the Galactic Empire and the return of feudalism, written from the standpoint of someone in the secure days of the Second Galactic Empire? I thought I knew how to do it, for I had read Edward Gibbon's Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire from the first page to the last at least twice, and I had only to make use of that. I was bubbling over by the time I got to Campbell's, and my enthusiasm was catchy. It was perhaps too catchy, for Campbell blazed up as I had never seen him do. That's too large a theme for a short story, he said. Well, I was thinking of a novelette, I said quickly, adjusting my thoughts. Or a novelette. It will have to be an open-ended series of stories. What? I said weakly. Short stories, novelettes, series all fitting together into a particular future history involving the fall of the First Galactic Empire, the period of feudalism that follows, and the rise of the Second Galactic Empire. What? I said even more weakly. He wanted not a single story, but a long, open-ended saga of the fall of the Galactic Empire, the Dark Ages that followed, and the eventual rise of a Second Galactic Empire, all mediated by the invented science of psychohistory which Campbell and I thrashed out between us in intricate detail, and which would enable skilled psychohistorians to predict the mass currents of future history and 
the thousand-year period between the First and Second Galactic Empires. We spent two hours together, and by the time it was over, it was not going to be a short story at all, but a definitely long series of connected stories dealing with the fall of the First Galactic Empire and the rise of the Second. Yes, I want you to write an outline of the future history. Go home and write the outline. There Campbell made a mistake. Robert Heinlein was writing what he called the Future History series. He was writing various stories that fitted into one niche or another of the series, and he wasn't writing them in order. Therefore, he had prepared a Future History outline that was very detailed and complicated so that he would keep everything straight. Now, Campbell wanted me to do the same. Heinlein, however, was Heinlein, and Asimov was not Heinlein. I went home dutifully, began preparing an outline that got longer and longer and stupider and stupider until I finally tore it up. It was quite plain that I couldn't work with an outline. To this day, I cannot for any of my stories, articles, or books, whether fiction or nonfiction. On August 11, I started the story I had originally intended to write, with modifications that resulted from my discussions with Campbell, and the heck with possible future stories. I'd worry about them when the time came, and if the time came. Since the First Galactic Empire was breaking down in my story, certain scientists had set up a foundation on a world at the rim of the galaxy, purportedly to prepare a vast encyclopedia of human knowledge, but actually to cut down the period of feudalism and hasten the rise of the Second Empire. I call the story Foundation, and the stories to which it gave rise have been lumped together, consequently as the Foundation series. I submitted Foundation to Campbell on September 8th. On the 15th, he accepted it, and on September 17th, I received my check, $126. It was smaller than the one I received for Nightfall, though the two stories were nearly equal in length, because there was no bonus for this one. Campbell did not hand them out lightly. Knowing that Campbell wanted me to write a series, by the way, I had employed a little shrewdness in keeping him from backing away. After working up a complicated problem in Foundation, I had the hero muse at the end. The solution to this first crisis was obvious. Obvious as all hell. And that was the end. I didn't say what the solution was. And Campbell let me get away with it. The idea was that Campbell would have to let me write the sequel now and would, moreover, have to take it. How clever of me. No. But his struggles with that outline, before he threw it aside and started fresh, more or less, as he had originally intended, could only be the first of his many discomforts at writing Foundation stories. At another point, he would describe writing from an outline as being like playing the piano from inside a straitjacket. Anxious to write out an idea he had for a robot story while it was fresh in his mind, and so his ideas for it wouldn't be cluttering up his mind while attempting to continue the Foundation series, he rapidly churned out the robot story runaround, confident that he would be able to come up with something for Foundation. It would not prove to be so easy, as he continues, quote, But I was still making trouble for myself over the second story of the Foundation series. So overconfident was I that I didn't even start it right away. Instead, I coolly cut down the margin of time I would have available for writing it by deciding to shift gears and turn out another positronic robot story. After Foundation, I was ready to try a serious positronic robot story for the first time in half a year. This one, Runaround, was submitted to Campbell on October 20, 1941, and he accepted it on the 23rd. It appeared in the March 1942 issue of Astounding and was eventually included in iRobot. What I didn't quite take into account was that the second story would have to be published in the issue after the one which Foundation appeared, making it a kind of two-part serial, meaning that I would have to have the second story done within a couple of months at most, or Foundation would be delayed in its appearance, and if that happened, Campbell would be disappointed in me. Foundation had been brought to an inconclusive ending, on the assumption that a sequel would be forthcoming, and I had to come through. I had foolishly anticipated there would be no trouble, but once I set about writing the second story in the series, I quickly became very sorry that I had been so infernally clever. When the going became hard, I couldn't abandon the story. I couldn't even put it aside to let it ripen. I just had to keep working. I had never painted myself into quite so tight a corner before. 
Finally, in October 24, I began the sequel to the Foundation, which I called Bridle and Saddle. In it, I explained how the Foundation had solved the initial problem and went on to describe how they had established a permanent hegemony over the neighboring kingdoms. In the first three days, I typed 17 pages and I spoke loftily in my diary of effortless spurts and said, Novelettes are so much easier than shorts. Well, they had better be. For October 27, when I visited Campbell, his first magic words were, I want that foundation story. And at once, as though by magic, bridle and saddle ground to a halt. On October 30, I said, My thoughts concerning the yarn have been most depressing. It doesn't seem to go. I tried revision, and that didn't help. I tried bullying my way forward, and it stalled anyway. I grew panicky. I had to have it done. There was no way in which I could fail to get it in to Campbell in November, and I had to have it good enough, or I would lose all credibility in his eyes. My wise guy overconfidence had now rebounded and pinned me to the wall. I was in despair. It was Fred Pohl, once again, who came to my rescue. I visited him on November 2. We visited back and forth constantly, as a matter of course. We walked across Brooklyn Bridge, I remember, and while leaning against the rail and looking down at the river, I told him of my troubles with bridle and saddle. His suggestions were excellent ones, but what they were I don't remember, and I didn't record them in my diary. In any case, I rushed home, began work again, and found the story moving easily. Without Pole, I don't know if I could have managed, and then what would have happened to the Foundation series. I finished Bridle and Saddle on November 16. Without further trouble, I took it in on November 17. Campbell read it then and there and bought it the same day, on record and speed. But again, without a bonus, how easily one is spoiled. After nightfall, an acceptance without a bonus felt like a rejection to me. Even so, since the story was 18,000 words long, the longest story I had yet written, in fact as long as pilgrimage, I received $180, the largest single check I had yet received. Bridle and saddle was eventually included in foundation. Now, at last, I had a series of long stories going, together with my Positronic Robot series of short stories. I was feeling quite good. Well, this new job and marriage gobbled up much of what spare time would have been used for writing. But in the intervening months, Nightfall, Not Final, Runaround, and Time Pussy appeared in the September and October 1941 and March and April 1942 issues of Astounding. Then, on April 10, 1942, the May issue of Astounding arrived at the newsstands with an 11,773-word story simply titled Foundation. I'll cut that off here and continue what happened 